Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Um, I'd like to thank all you guys out there for subscribing to our show. Absolutely. We so appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now before Stacy gives you some really cool information about what's going on right now. Yes, today, are you a fan of The Lion Guard or Star Wars The Clone Wars? Andrew Cascino is here. Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, Prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Guys, our guest is a dynamic actor, musician, composer, and producer. You love him in Star Wars The Clone Wars, The Lion Guard, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, just to name a few. And check it out, he's a Mensa member. True story. We are so happy he's here with us. And we are ready to get buzzed with the literally brilliant... Andrew Cascino. Absolutely. Yay. Thank you so Andrew much for having me. Brilliant. Thank you God. so Andrew much for Put it there. Oh, my bro. Oh, yeah. Good handshake. My bro. Get down. Great to see you. I'm so Great glad you're here. Great to see you both. Thank Absolutely, you. Absolutely, Thank you so man. much for having me. So yeah, good. dude, I remember we met you at a party yeah. right. not too mm -hmm. long ago right. for one yes. of your agents' yes. birthday. Yes. Right. Yes. Exactly. Sweet. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, uh, Sweet. And that, that was the first time, I don't know if Stacey had met you before, but that was the first time I met well, you. Well, I had heard so much about you. We have mutual friends that adore you, and so that I was, was like, oh, we find, and we had been you know, talking about Yeah, um, I never heard anything on. about you, but... After I met you, I was like, that guy is like the coolest guy like, I've I ever met. Him. And Stacey's like, that's I Andrew that I was talking about. I go, oh. <laughs> so Man. people know you as basically the coolest guy in town. Yes, you are loved. <laughs> and and you, you have. He's speechless. He's I, like, yeah. okay, and scene. <laughs> I, thank you. It's, um, it's well earned. What do you got to say you for yourself? Live, you yes. <laughs> Quite an intro. I, I, I first of all, re yeah, thank you. Um, Top it was it was amazing to meet you finally because I think we passed each other a bunch of times, yeah. both uh, in professional and, and personal environments, yeah. but we mm -hmm. never had a chance to say hi or chop it yeah. up for any you know appreciable length of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we finally got to talk, I was really really grateful we did. But it was yeah, it was dope. So, also man. happy you're so, here. Yeah, and now I'm here. And I now know. you're here, buddy. Well, we're happy to have you and Dig our, in, our crowds out there. Yeah. Look, the crowds are forming Look all over the, the audience. internet. Just They're going like nuts. standing um, and throwing hey, man. <laughs> so we're going to get right to it because yeah. we've got a bunch of cool questions cool. for you. All right. um, what um, uh, Was acting something that you always knew that you wanted to do? No. Uh, actually... Acting is something that it seems kind of counterintuitive because yeah. it's something that I didn't think I would ever do because I'm, <laughs> I'm fundamentally I'm very shy. Yeah. I'm not somebody who likes to get out there and gorilla beat their chest and be like I'm that yeah. person. I don't hey, have look that. at me! Uh. Yeah, like yeah. I don't have that impulse. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was very young, um, I, well, although I wasn't diagnosed with it, I, I had tr a lot of trouble trouble reading, and it wasn't until later that I realized that I was dyslexic. So what I did get into early on is weird. Like you uh, literally dyslexic? Yeah, yeah, like actually dyslexic. Okay, like, wow. like not a joke dyslexic. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. For real, like dyslexic. Yeah. But very early on I also got into hip hop. And hip hop has a way of taking language and organizing it in a metered structure that takes words and allows you to comprehend them and stress the meaning and understand how you construct sentences and convey meaning mm -hmm. and listen carefully and comprehend things that are, people are saying. And that became a tool by which I could kind of surmount that obstacle. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Man, that must have felt like... Oh, it was grimy. <gasps> yeah, no, it, it was, was grimy. Jack. It was grimy. And, grimy. And uh, definition of grimy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Andrew, what Difficult is the definition or, of grimy? Or having a, a great AKA degree of, you know, challenging. <laughs> a great degree of challenging <laughs> sort of nature to it, yeah. So, but yeah, that was the thing that um, that um, kind of gave me the the uh, not only from a uh, an ability to overcome that obstacle, mm -hmm. but also because that kind of thing tends to erode your self confidence. Oh, yeah. yeah. It. It was something that gave me a, uh, a great amount of self-esteem because, you know, with hip hop, you tend to have to be a little, you, you have to externalize have a lot of this kind of swagger, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was a way for me to kind of externalize something that I didn't have and, and for lack of a better way of putting it, manufacture that until I kind of had it. Mm -hmm. And straight out of high school, I got signed by A&M Records and put out an album and 
you know, toured and did my thing, did another one on Sony, and, you know, and that was it. And so that was my... And that was Rhyme the World in 88 That was on the first album, right. Yeah, yeah. And that, um, that was the the thing that gave me my performance background and mm-hmm. sort of jump forward a little bit. Um, hold, on, hold on, you guys can find that on YouTube, by the way. Rhyme the World in 80 Days, you can find that on YouTube. Rhyme the World in 80 Days. That was about 20 years and 40,000 cheeseburgers ago. So you, I, yeah, I look a little YouTube different. YouTube adds, adds weight. YouTube adds 30 pounds. Well then the filter was exceptionally <laughs> strong on mine, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Don't you yeah. talk about Andrew like that. Okay. Mm. Anyway, hey, we'll beat you up, man. You. <laughs> Andrew's our friend. Um, yeah, so, so, so good, um, but yeah, to jump forward a little bit, um, Rob Paulson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rob, who I am honored to call a friend and a colleague. Yeah. Um, he has always said that uh, almost all of us in voiceover have an applied skill. Like there's something that we did outside of voiceover that we bring to it that informs what we do. Yes. And that was the thing that informed when I got into voiceover. It was like, well, that's the thing that gives me sort of my, for lack of a better term, flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, again, it was a whole sort of relearning process of saying like, well, should I you know, ignore that? Should I walk away from it? And again, it was the wrestling with the self-esteem of yeah. like, how do I present? Mm-hmm. And much like another one of your guests, Dave Walsh says, with yeah. the yes. authenticity of the true tell thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dave, Dave and I have had many conversations yeah. just because, I, you know, he was very much about this. He was always like, Kish, you got to take, you know, exactly what you have and present that because that's the authentic place that you're yeah, coming absolutely. from. And once you do that, that's the inimitable viewpoint that you will display that will be that will make you uniquely you on a mic. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like going full circle and then going full circle again. Yeah. So great. Yeah. It that was, must have been so liberating. I mean, absolutely, to just, man. Because you know, it's like everyone's like, I want to be, I want to be like everyone else, but different. You know, it's like that must have been so liberating to to say, oh my gosh, I get to just be who I am. That was exactly. And it's enough. Yeah. I am exactly enough. It. Who I am, how I am, is enough, and that is such a huge gift to give to yourself. It absolutely is. And and it's it's always tough because those journeys take a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not something that kind of that just happens and you just you sort of have an epiphany one day and there's yeah. no work to it. You kind of have to walk through the fire. You have to fall down a bunch of times. You have mm-hmm. to get scarred. Yeah. And by the time you get to the point where you need to be, then you're able to go, oh, now I understand. It's almost like you have to unlearn what you learned. Of yeah. Course, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an arduous path, but one well worth walking. Yeah. So I mean, oh, so man. now oh, man. because you're a voice actor, dude, and it's like you your job requires you to read yeah. like all the time, right? Yeah. Well and so, how often are you just handed the copy right there? You're all handed the time. it. Yeah. So yeah. do so you just how, how do you deal with that now? Like it is it a, is it different or does it, well, that's a great question. There's there's a couple of ways that I kind of have to deal with things. One is, and you know, I have to roll with Tylenol sometimes because you just get a headache. <laughs> but I do have to roll with uh, a pencil, which I always keep tucked in my hair. <laughs> that that segment was sponsored, sponsored by, by Tylenol. By Tylenol. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> G- generic pain, generic analgesic. No, uh, we're trying to get a gig. We're trying yeah, to get a gig killer. for all of us. Yeah, roll, um, roll with your Tylenol. But yeah, uh, so I always roll with a pencil, which is usually jammed in my hair. Yeah. I always usually have a highlighter, mm-hmm. and what I'll do is very quickly make notes, and then I will read it out loud. But I'll try to go over it as quickly as I can mm-hmm. prior to. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does require a great deal of focus and concentration, and that's kind of also the reason why whenever I'm in any kind of ensemble animation session or anything, I always stand. Because yeah. I have to be 100% locked on the, the words and the copy. And even at the very least, if not lining things through, at best, highlighting them so things don't start to fly all over the place. I was going to say, so the highlighter definitely helps it stay it absolutely more does. in focus, literally. It absolutely yeah. does, yeah. So So that's, that, that is something that does... Um, yeah, it does require a great do- deal of focus now, and concentration. Now, at this point, if we, if nobody knew that, and you were in a session, and nobody knew right. that you actually had dyslexia, that little bit, yeah, would they ever even know? No, I don't think anybody knows. Yeah, I, well, I think few people. Well, do. now everybody. Uh, now, but well, now everybody does. But <laughs> the globe um, now. No, but it, but I love it because there are people watching that are dealing with this as well. Yeah. And what a great example you are that this you know you're not. It's not a crutch for you. It's no. an extra little. 
flavor, an extra little spice that you go through, but you know, you're you're not you're not backing away from it. You're plowing through it, and I think that's an amazing. You're an amazing role model in yeah, that regard. Yeah, that's really well, cool, man. Thank you. You know, again, to go to the Rob Paulson principle, where you pull everything from uh, all of your applied skills, and shout to my man Maestro Fresh West, who I, you know from t- my man from time. Yeah. Um, we always talk all the time, and we're like, he says, you know, there are no useless skills. Mm. So everything that we learn, we pull from. So it's almost like hip hop, in that sense, informs all of that and becomes, as you were saying, it's sort of like, that's the, the workaround, that's the tool. Yeah. But then also what it does is it lends a certain degree of, uh, there's a sensibility with which I now interpret copy that that uses that musical framework um, mm-hmm. as the way I see the language. Because everybody obviously sees language differently, whether mm-hmm. they're right. a classically trained, because you went to Juilliard, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so classically trained, or whether you were somebody who has done on-camera commercials, or whether you're someone who's a writer, uh, prose or poetry, you're gonna see the language differently. So the language will, um, how the same sentence will be spit different ways by different people. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love that. That's great, dude. I love that. That's, um, that's gonna, that's going to help somebody. You don't know it, it yet, well, but yeah. you'll, you'll... I mean, because the thing is, is so many people feel that they can't... It must be terrifying. Can't it must be terrifying. Because of this. Yeah. Or they can't because of that. Oh, I don't have this, so I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh-huh. Uh, it's too hard because I have this problem. Yeah, I'm at a disadvantage. You know, but the thing yeah. is, is that you might already do something that could help you through that problem if you just plow through a little bit. Because you were probably a little bit afraid, right? I mean... Oh. Oh, you're listen. terrified. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> He's reconnected with the fear right now, Chuck. He's like, Chuck, I'm never afraid. Yeah, dude, oh no, you, man, lightning, I'm still you scared. struck, I got struck. <laughs> you, um, I still have that thing that they always counsel you against, yeah. where you walk into a room and they go, don't be afraid, because you were invited there. I'm like, <laughs> man, come on. I walk into a room and I'll see, and I'm friends with people like John DiMaggio, Phil Lamar, Vanessa Marshall, Kari Walgren, you know, like all, they're all the greats. They're all, right. they're yeah. the legends, they're right? The legends, yeah. But I walk in there and I'm kinda like, Dang, everybody gonna find out that I don't belong here. I have the past. And there is, it has yeah, my name you know what I mean? It. And it's like there's a countdown clock on my shoulder Aww. that's like seconds before this dude's like, uh, well, there's somebody here who doesn't belong. So <laughs> can you just. Can you believe? If you could just, and you're doing one of these, like the hunched kind of get walk out oh, type of thing. No. And I still get that occasionally. You get flashes of that. But that is sort of the voice, the internal voice that. To, to what you were saying, that's saying, no, you can't. Mm-hmm. And what you have to remember is you're armored with things that say, yes, you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you are infinitely stronger than the things that say you can't. The right. things that say you can't are things that, that they're born out of a place that you have to leave behind. Yeah. Are, you're never gonna fully ditch them, right. but you can distance yourself from them. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And you can yeah. always acknowledge that they're there, yeah. but you know, well, it's if you choose to live from a place of a base of fear or a base of love. That's exactly it. Because yeah. love will breed the confidence, and confidence and arrogance are not the same thing. No, they're not. You no, know? they're not. Um, <clears throat> you know, qu- quiet confidence is better than loud arrogance, mm-hmm. and and that whole thing too of of fear of coming from a place of fear coming from versus coming from a place of love from a professionalism standpoint is the people who come in like we were saying who gorilla beat their chest like I am this person, and you know they're always running their mouth about a whole bunch of stuff versus the people who you know who come in and the minute they open their mouth you're like oh my goodness well, like when you for example yeah, if you stood in a room with that, d yeah. bradley baker yeah. Oh, yeah. and you're like he opens his mouth <laughs> and you're just <laughs> like you freak out yeah. this dude is not well he's not human we know yeah that. he's right. cr- and then well, what is every time whenever we were anywhere and i looked down and i see a cricket i'm like there's d you yeah. know what i mean hi totally. d I I mean. i'm like oh don't step on d yeah so and and then you talk to him and he's the most kind so, intelligent yeah. funny person gracious and humble yeah right because mm-hmm. he's just like I just love what I do so yeah, so much. He is addicted to yeah. what he does. Yeah, it's amazing. And and yeah. that is the, you know, that's the 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 great part about yeah. him. And he was actually when I went to do the Clone Wars, he was the I was sitting beside him in the very first session, oh, wonderful. which was amazing. That must have helped. It did because actually what happened was um, I was coming from another session and I had been sort of booked real close and tight on it, and not to sort of get to 
geocentric to Los Angeles, but it was in Glendale, and this was being recorded at LA Studios, and I had oh, like yeah. 45 minutes, from yeah. the, and I was like, okay, traffic is going to be tight. Without traffic, it's a 10-minute yeah. drive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> With, it can be an hour and 10. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it was tight. So I also hadn't eaten. So I rolled through mm. unnamed fast food spot and grabbed some food and ate it in the car, which I have long ago learned that you're never <laughs> supposed do to do. Okay, I've learned my lesson. That'll fight back on you. Yo, listen. <laughs> I got in there, and that stuff had its own rebel alliance going no, on, and it was it was. That's why Saw Guerrero was such a multi-layered character. There oh was some pickle. God. There was. D looked at me in the middle of it because man, there was some sounds coming out. He probably got some new out. character ideas. He gave me a look, and he was like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "I'm peace, man. I just gotta." I know I'm sweating, I don't look right, but yeah. I gotta, I'm just like, once we get to a break, I just need to splash some water <laughs> on my face, I'll be good. I need a but wet yeah. wipe. And he was unfailingly gracious in that situation, yes. but that was lesson learned. Don't that do that, hysterical. don't eat in the car. That's so great, There's yeah. the voiceover tip right there. <laughs> yes. My gift for voiceover tips is right there, don't eat in your car. Tip don't eat in your car. One. There yes. it is. It's not on the way to a session, right? right. No. Um, hey man, take us through your process of, you get an audition for mm -hmm. whatever it might be, what do you do with it? How do you break it down to determine what it is that you're gonna do with it? And what is it that makes you say, okay, now it's good enough, I'm gonna send it in, I'm done? Uh, let's take, for example, a piece of just a piece of commercial copy. Sure. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, the copy will arrive via email from my agents, Samit Iyengar or Bo Oliver at CESD. Yay. Um, Best agents in town. <laughs> and, um, you know, print it, and I'm old school, so I print it out because I like to, again, I have mm -hmm. to make my own marks, yeah. but I also like to, I prefer to read stuff off paper, yeah. that's just me. Yeah. Um, and usually it's sent the night before, so assuming it's not last minute copy. Right. Sent the night before, so I'll read it the prior night, again, for reasons, obviously, for me, yeah. for dual reasons. Mm -hmm. One is for comprehension, obviously, the other for, you know, so I'm on point. Then what I'll do is get up early in the next morning, go into the booth, and do, like, do warm ups, then come in and having made notes on it, depending on what the product or service is, how like I own those words, how I will make those words mine. So it's n they don't belong to the paper anymore, they belong to me. Mm -hmm. So it's almost in a sense like I'm trying to extrude it into a third dimension. Because you, know, you can read anything and apply a sonic print on it that may sound like any kind of common commercial thing, right. but again, it goes back to what we discussed in the beginning where it's kind of yeah. like, I have to put my own perspective on it yeah. because then it's, otherwise it's not believable. It's mm -hmm. like the old adage of if you're reading copy about anything, let's say an alcoholic beverage, but you hate it, you're gonna hear that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now there are obviously devices that we all know that yep. you, know, you can subvert that, but at the, by the same token it is owning, for lack of a better way of putting it, owning the words to make them your own mm -hmm. so that you're speaking not from here, but from here. Mm -hmm. and, and the words are coming from here. So there's a physicality to it, for me at least, in how I interpret it so that when I'm finally saying it, they, you know, they're my words. They, f they yeah. feel true. Right, yeah. they feel yeah. absolutely completely true. Mm -hmm. Then, So does that mean almost, do you get them to the point where almost they're like kind of memorized a little bit or mm. or internalized, you know? In like Internalized would be a better yeah, yeah, way of not putting memorized. it. Not, internalized yeah. would be a much better way of putting it because memorized that would sort of, I think it would sound mechanical. So a good friend of mine, uh, and I'm doing this mocap session with yeah. him, and there was a, an, an exchange between us, and I had to have the whole thing memorized. Yeah. But of course, because I'm so completely terrified because it was the first mocap job I've ever done, mm. and I have exactly that amount of acting experience, like move through space and talk words, Yeah, you know, exactly that. Because again, quick aside, the director's there and he goes, okay, you guys, when we're doing this, forget everything you learned in drama school. And I'm like, that's not done. gonna be a problem. Check. That's not gonna be a problem! <laughs> that done. Is, that's done. I did that. Nailed that it. was done before you even asked. <laughs> so I run up and I'm like, I'm like, hey man, hey man. 
I forgot what the hell I was supposed to say to you. And they were like, cut. And I was like, great. And I'm standing there and it's like, you know, on a sound stage and it's like the set of 2001 because everything's white and there's like 18 people with all the stuff and I'm standing there. No pressure. Basically na looking naked with one of these suits on. I'm like, this is so uncool. There's no way to look fresh now. <laughs> so I'm like, can I get like 30 more seconds with the paper, please? I'm like, okay. You can do this. You can do, you can it. do it. You're good. And we got through it and it was good, but it was a little terrifying. Yeah, yeah. But to continue on what you were saying about the process of the audition, I'm yes. sorry to take such a circuitous route. Oh good, I'm glad you remembered that because I had forgotten right. that one. I took a bit of a circuitous route on it, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, once the words had gone to Pro Tools, and I, I tend to, I favor Pro Tools because you know we're musician heads, so yeah. that's what I, I use, exactly. I like, um, is I'll edit it down, uh, I am a huge proponent of not using EQ or compression unless there's something absolutely, completely out of control. Right. I don't do that because I've, I'm a strong believer of, number one, if you overprocess something, then they're going to expect you to sound a certain way when you get in the booth, and it may not sound that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And number two is if you're not, if you don't have a background where you're thoroughly familiar with manipulating those tools, yep. you can do things where you might do something really terrible to the file. So you're much better off yeah. just set your levels really well and just make sure that what's going in sounds really clear. Yeah, they make right. things sound right. out unnatural. Right, right. Yeah. exactly. And, and because they've lost the grip on what the natural sound is, yeah. mm. they're just listening for what is the most brick walled loudest thing that I can get. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're not going, that doesn't, that just doesn't even sound real anymore. Yeah. So after that, I take it now, and again, always record in WAVE, and always bounce down to MP3. Don't ever record native in MP3. I always record right. in WAVE, 4824, bounce down to MP3, take that file, attach it to an email, send it to, um, to CESD, and then they, from there, uh, continue the submission process to the exactly. various clients. Are you a harsh critic? When Terrible. It comes oh, to he's got to be. Oh, I'm horrible, yeah. Because obviously you're critiquing not only the acting side, but the production side as well. I mean, you're probably are you are you critiquing your editing as well as your you oh know, yeah I mean, everything. Oh so. yeah, I'm like I'm down to where it's like if the wave isn't crossing at the zero axis, I'm like <laughs> ah, there's a click there, and I'm going in and doing all this yeah. stupid pencil drawing and yeah, and you can rabbit hole yourself Oof. really easily. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I'm I, I'm I have because I have a little posted up that says leave it alone. Oh nice. Where I'm just like you know. It just, yeah. Leave it Walk alone. Walk away. Kish. Walk away. Yeah. Send. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also it depends on who's listening to it and where they're listening to it. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Because, that, this, yeah. you know, not everyone has the Chuck Duran Kish yeah. specials. I mean, they're listening through possibly a phone, a tablet, a laptop. 99% you know, yeah. of the auditions that we get if they're going for, for commercial stuff is yeah. being listened back to on earbuds, mm -hmm. built-in computer speakers, or like $59 Best Buy multimedia speakers. They're not yeah. gonna have a pair of KRK V4s, no. God forbid, you know, V8s or JBL far-field yeah. monitors or whatever. They're gonna be like, I heard someone's voice. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna be able to be like, Oh, no, he did that through a AKG C12 and an ISA 428, and he was running it kind of hard. So Never. The, you know, yeah. you didn't, yeah. They're, they're going to be like, no. did I hear his, did the words come out in the right order? <laughs> yeah. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so if you had some tips, some do's and don'ts for someone who has a home studio, what would be Big Kish's do's and don'ts? So we're going to do a part two then, right? Well, this might be a part this is gonna be the part four. Two? This is going to be yeah, like... <laughs> okay. We're right. still on part These one, These are two-part episodes, but... <laughs> oh, it's about to get part two right It's going to right get, get juicy right it's now. It's about to get part two. I'm feeling okay. the juice is coming. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I would say is don't get the best stuff you can get, but don't kill yourself if you can't get the pantheon of gear that everybody talks about. Start with what you can start with, mm -hmm. because it will always come back to the performance, which is generated in here. That yeah. will always be the determinant factor. Absolutely. There is no amount of gear that will absolutely. amend a performance that will be that Abs way. You're absolutely right. So yeah. you don't want to have 
a vintage C12 mic for $10,000 or, you know, a Telefunken Elam or an M49 or some ungodly piece of expensive gear because it's not going to make you sound better. Mm -hmm. no. Second thing I would say is don't put so much stress on the perfect mic. There is the mic for you. Just as there are the right kind of shoes that you wear, if you're someone who walks a lot, some, or then if there's someone who, if you're in the gym a lot, or if you mm -hmm. cycle or whatever, or if you drive, you know, you may want an SUV, or maybe you're someone who wants a two-door Tesla, because that's what you want. Mics are the same way. They serve the purpose for the instrument that they're supposed to uh, reproduce the best way. Mm -hmm. um, third thing I would say is, the, this is the thing that kind of is the really big sticking point for me. The preamp is as important and almost in some cases more important than the mic because the, a great preamp can make a half decent mic sound amazing, great, yeah. mm -hmm. but a lousy preamp will take a great mic and make yeah. it sound like trash. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna spend $1,500 on a mic and plug it into <laughs> I shouldn't say any brand because I'm going to get killed. Yeah. I'll get roasted. Something that costs under a hundred bucks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for saving me on that. Okay. If you got it at Bed Bath and Beyond with the twenty percent off. Oh my! Off, you know what I mean? Bed Bath and Beyond. You know what I'm saying? now. Like yeah, exactly. And I was so close to saying a brand. I was like, oh my, <laughs> this is not going to be good. But exactly what you were saying. If you've yeah. got like some cut rate bar off brand kind of whack. Mm -hmm. sort of interface and you just plug your XLR into that and turn it up, you will get none of what that performance is. It's like taking a a, a, an, a, a finely tuned piece of machinery like a Porsche yeah. and putting like you know, like vegetable oil in the engine. Yeah. It's just not going to yeah. work. Yeah. So that, and then lastly I would say this, and this is sort of something I would say to anybody at this point, is what we do now is so computer dependent. So it it behooves you now to understand the way a computer works. You have to know if you should be, some people are doing their accounting on it, you're definitely communicating on it, you're obviously recording on it, and you may be editing film or doing whatever on it, whatever else on it. So if it runs into a glitch and that cans your whole operation, mm -hmm. that shouldn't happen. You, there should be basic stuff that you know how to troubleshoot, basic things that you know how to get around in order to make things to keep things running fluidly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, we're not at a point anymore where you, we can say in our field, I I'm just not good with computers. It's like you can't be because yeah. otherwise you might as well say the thing just has magic in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I would say. Um, know your, which goes to the whole thing of like, you know, EQs, compressors and so on. It's okay to use them, but you should know how to use them. Yeah, and my experience with EQs and just any kind of effect that you would put into your voice, whatever it is that you're doing. A lot of people think that, you know, the purpose of that particular effect, like EQ, for example, is to give it more. When in reality, what you do with most of these things is you do, you take out. Subtractive, it's subtractive EQ. Exactly, so because when you're recording your normal voice out of a booth or whatever, whatever it is, you know, it's recording frequencies on the high end and even on the low end and even somewhere around the mids that you don't necessarily want to record. So you duck them out and all of a sudden, whoops, your voice sounds yeah. clear and beautiful. You're left with the good You stuff. know, and if it's got too much high end, it's gonna be sibilance, and of course, depending on the mic that you're using, it's gonna have more or less, mm -hmm. so you can toy around with that. But say, always think of effects as seasoning. If you grab a handful oh gosh, of salt brilliant. and throw it in a dish, you can't yeah. eat it. That's brilliant, yeah. Right, but if you just do a speck, and Moderation you go like, Ooh, you know what? Key. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That's, season. What, what, that is exactly it, because there are so many people who have that yeah. attitude of like, I have a plug-in that will make it sound great. Or people who, <laughs> yeah. will, who will I have say, a plug -in. yeah, or they'll say like, this sounds warm or whatever, and they want warmth, which is this elusive, subjective concept. Yeah, I know that people what's have, warm. Yeah. Um, have on stuff, and like we were saying, even prior to starting the whole thing about recording the tape, it's like if you ain't heard your voice play back on tape, you don't know what saturation and warmth is, right. and the difference between 
warmth as per iron oxide transformers, tube transformers, yeah. tape saturation, to hitting stuff hard. Those are all di those conceptually. Those are all different things. Yeah. And then when the things get squashed down to an MP3, it's like taking 100% of something yeah. and shaving it down to 10% of that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it loses and you know what? all of that. A lot that. of people yeah. don't know that when you're compressing down to an MP3, you're literally doing that. You are compressing. So that file is getting compressed anyhow. If you over compress or using too much compression, even while you're recording, mm. When you go down to MP3, you're compressing more, and now it's over. You're like an audio munchkin. Yeah, so yeah. there's yeah. a really fine line. So I kind of yeah. like your 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 idea of just doing minimal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and having it sound real because that's going to be you. You'll be able to duplicate that anywhere. That's what they're hiring. That's, that's, that's exactly what, yeah. it. The yeah. key mm -hmm. is you want to be able to go in there and have them go. I recognize that from. That's a key yeah. part of the process to me. Is yeah is don't make it, obviously make it the best audition, but make it the best audition from the performance standpoint. Yeah. Because if you can't reproduce that presence, yeah. you're mm -hmm. in trouble. Yeah. yeah. You're in a yeah. lot of trouble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what got you from Toronto to Los Angeles? Just, you know, it was... Besides a plane. There you go. Sealing out in the in the um, in the music industry there, and and coming to a new place with new opportunities, mm -hmm. and realizing that it's like around the time that I was getting out of it, it was like was right at the cusp of when MP3s were coming in. Yeah. So that became, and and the music game was always really hard anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it was one of those things where I was kind of like, okay, I've done my young man's game of being, you know, don't go around being an idiot and doing my stories that <laughs> you know you obviously father. can't relate to, you know, can't tell back here, but yes. but you know, doing my thing. And then now um being in a place where I could be like, okay, how do I again transfer those skills into doing something mm -hmm. that incorporates what I know into something new. Right. And that was and quite literally I had no I mean, obviously, you have a concept that there is voiceover, right. but it's one of those things that seems completely, utterly alien to you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this is one thing that I know you guys say a lot, is um, I took classes. I did not go in and say, how do you do this? I would like them to throw large blank checks at me. <laughs> it, I was like, let me take classes because I have no acting background. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me understand the the specificity of the craft because obviously like anything it's gonna have its own set of rules and um, its own you know kind of way that you approach it of course um, but then let me take my familiarity with a studio environment I was gonna say you bring that whole backstory right. which is and amazing how the mic works and how to use it and that's incredible for, which was I was so fortunate I was so grateful to be able to go okay, if I can get the performance stuff down from the mic out to there and everything in there, I understand that. So that doesn't intimidate me. But now it's kind of just, how do I let this like that? Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, that's that's always still a struggle for me. Was that's, there anything along yeah. the way or well, anyone? Well, we're never done. I think when we... I think when we say, yeah, I got this. I mean, I think yeah. if when you stop growing and evolving, then that's... Absolutely. Something to consider, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, you know, because I'm still writing music, still doing, yeah. you know, still doing stuff. Don't you dare stop. stop doing that. It's in your blood, dude. Don't um, you dare uh, stop. Did any, you coach with a bunch of people and stuff, like you were saying, right? You're like. Yeah, I was fortunate to, uh, to Was take, there anybody, and you don't even have to say their name, but was there anybody that actually said something to you that really just mm, clicked and got you to that next level of just okay, I can deliver now, I can be me, and I can mm -hmm. just, you know, I know what I'm doing when it comes to voiceover. I, I don't know that I could attribute like a singular phrase or Not a, a phrase, but like, you know, a, a, a person who maybe taught a certain thing to you. Certain thing or guidance. I, I would yeah. have to say. A certain style, a certain I, way I would, of looking. I, was, I, I got a lot of value out of uh, Harvey Kalmanson's class. Mm -hmm. That was the first class I took. I got an extraordinary amount of value, and I was incredibly fortunate to take Andrea Romano's, mm. uh, and when she ha had a weekend intensive, nice. Um, and that was like when I was greener than green, so I literally had no experience. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think it was a lot of the on-the-job learning that when I f when I got to a point where I went and back to and took coaching with Dave Walsh, mm. 
There was stuff that he was telling me that was m less of the how you do this to let's get inside here and here and let's extract that because, yeah, I mean, that's a, a war throughout my life has been where do I fit in? Where do you know what? What space do I occupy mm -hmm. from the standpoint of even, you know, I look Latino. Um, I sound a way that people will frequently say is you sound, and I hate this word, but urban. And I'm Japanese and British. So I'm in this constant other box, mm -hmm. which t can feel alienating. And Dave is more of somebody who talks to you. So yeah. it's not yeah, sort of like yeah. a, a dispensing of, some. right, yeah, it's really not a, like that. a dispensation of information. Mm -hmm. He's talking to you. So a lot of that stuff was like, was like, right, right, right. This, this, what I need to do is go back to where I am right in here and go, oh yeah, that's right. The stuff that I've lived through, I know nobody else has. So yeah. I got to pull mm -hmm. on that. And once I put that, on that. Yeah. Butter that on that so, bread. Hey, that's, that's warm yeah. right there, baby. So yeah. everything that you needed, you, you already, already had. had. That was exactly Hello. it. That is exactly it. I and love that. That's it right it, there. Yeah. My dude, yeah. I, I don't want to bang the lab, lab no. but yeah, my dude, that's it right there. Well, that is part one with Andrew Cascino. We're going to be back next week with part two, so don't miss it. Absolutely. Is he the coolest? The, the coolest. coolest. The yes. coolest. Yes. Keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. We love you guys. And just remember, you, you always, always have time for a little buzz. buzz. The O Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.